Welcome back to TPS. Many NFL legends spend their entire careers with just one team. Some of them, hello Peyton Manning and Drew Brees, enjoy excellent tenures with two teams. And then there's a handful of NFL greats that seem to travel the country quite a bit, playing for three or more teams throughout their careers. Still, we remember where guys like Manning and Joe Montana finished their NFL journeys, but other all-time greats finished their careers in places we often forget about. I'm Justin Fraction, and today we present 10 NFL players who had the weirdest final stop in their careers. At TPS, we post videos every single day, so don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. And don't forget to leave your ideas down below for more cool videos. You never know if we see one in the comment section and we like it, we might give you a shout out and we'll make the video. Number 10, Ed Reed, New York Jets. Arguably the greatest safety in NFL history, and no, that's not an exaggeration. Ed Reed did it all for the Baltimore Ravens during his 11 seasons with the team. He was named the 2004 Defensive Player of the Year, earned nine Pro Bowl selections, five first-team All-Pro selections, and led the league in interceptions three times. Together, Reed, Terrell Suggs, and Ray Lewis fronted one of the most dominant, intimidating, and punishing defensive units the NFL had ever seen. While Lewis and Suggs were dishing out the big hits and sacks, Reed was patrolling the secondary at near perfection. He did it all as a premier ball-hawking safety. But after Reed and the Ravens won Super Bowl 47 over the San Francisco 49ers, the organization decided to start a retooling process. Lewis retired, and the Ravens let Reed leave in free agency. Reed signed a three-year deal with the Houston Texans, but he struggled with his new team, not benched, and was released. The New York Jets signed Reed, and he wound up starting five games for Rex Ryan. He performed well with three interceptions and four passes defended, but he decided not to play in 2014 and eventually retired. Ryan was on Baltimore's coaching staff when Reed entered the league as a rookie in 2002. How fitting that Ryan turned out to be Reed's final head coach in the NFL, only with a different team. Number 9. Chris Carter, Miami Dolphins Carter spent his first three NFL seasons with the Philadelphia Eagles, but he didn't become a star until he joined the Minnesota Vikings via a waiver claim in 1990. Carter had problems with alcohol and drugs and fell out of favor in Philly, but he made the most of his second chance with the Vikings. Carter became an eight-time Pro Bowler and even led the NFL in receiving touchdowns three times. He was part of the 1998 historic Vikings team that also featured Randy Moss, you know, a team that won 15 games and set a record with 556 points scored during the regular season. Many fell just short of reaching the Super Bowl that year after a crushing NFC Championship game lost to the Atlanta Falcons. Carter and Moss revived a Vikings franchise that had struggled for much of the 1980s and early 90s, but Carter saw his production decline in the 2001 season, and he decided to opt out of his deal to enter free agency. Carter then signed with the Miami Dolphins in the midst of the 2002 season, appearing in five games. He caught eight receptions for 66 yards and one interception. Carter retired after a not-so-spectacular and very brief tenure in South Beach. Number 8. Tony Dorsett, Denver Broncos He became an integral piece of the Dallas Cowboys when they drafted him with the number 2 pick in 1977. Dorsett became a dynamic running back to complement an efficient passing game led by future Hall of Famer Roger Staubach. We didn't see much of Dorsett and Staubach together in Dallas, unfortunately, but they certainly made the most of their time together. Dorsett and the Cowboys won Super Bowl XII over the Denver Broncos, and he went on to enjoy eight 1,000-yard seasons and Big D. The four-time Pro Bowler eventually wore out his welcome in Dallas, however, growing unhappy after being asked to play different positions on offense. Dorsett would be traded to the Denver Broncos for a fifth-round pick before the 1988 season. Dorsett rushed for 703 yards and five touchdowns in his only season with the Broncos, before a knee injury forced him to retire the following year. Because of the short stint, it's easy to forget that Dorsett played one year in Denver. The man will always be associated with the Cowboys and nobody else. Number 7. Bruce Smith, Washington Redskins the NFL's all-time sacks leader was a key reason why the Buffalo Bills became an AFC powerhouse, propelling them to four straight Super Bowl appearances. Smith was an 11-time Pro Bowler and took home the 1990 and 96 Defensive Player of the Year awards. But after the 99 season, the Bills made the difficult choice to part ways with franchise legends like Smith, Thurman Thomas, and Andre Reid. In the ensuing offseason, Smith signed with the Washington Redskins where he'd play out his final four seasons. Smith was well past his prime, of course, which is why we often forget he made his final NFL stop here in D.C. He had 29 sacks over those four years in Washington and retired after the 2003 season. Number 6 Terrell Owen, Cincinnati Bengals T.L. was an instrumental part of the golden era for NFL wide receivers in the 90s, one that included Jerry Rice, Chris Carter, and Randy Moss, among others. Owens played for five teams throughout his illustrious career, and three of them were especially memorable. We can't forget the lethal T.O. Jerry Rice duo in San Francisco. 
And even though he didn't even last two years in Philadelphia, Owen sure left his mark on the franchise, leading them to a Super Bowl 39 appearance before a controversial exit. Owens also spent three seasons with the Cowboys and along with Tony Romo, he led Dallas to a pair of playoff berths. Well, remember the get your popcorn ready and that's my quarterback segments, that's for sure. But one thing we often forget is that Owens played his final NFL season with the Cincinnati Bengals back in 2010, teaming up with Carson Palmer and Chad Ochocinco. Owens actually had a productive season, notching 72 catches for 983 yards and 9 touchdowns. Owens tore his ACL in the ensuing offseason and didn't sign with anybody. He would sign with the Seattle Seahawks in 2012, but wound up getting released before the season started. Owens never played in the NFL again after that. Number 5. Emmett Smith, Arizona Cardinals The all-time rushing yards leader was the heart and soul of the Dallas Cowboys in the 1990s. Together, he, Troy Aikman, and Michael Irvin formed the iconic triplets leading the Cowboys to three Super Bowl championships over a four-year span. Smith's tenure in Dallas was nothing short of remarkable and historic, but the future Hall of Famer was released in the 2003 offseason. The lowly Arizona Cardinals handed Smith a two-year contract, where he played out his final two seasons before retiring. Well, he wasn't that productive in Arizona, but Smith at least added to his record of 18,355 career rushing yards. Hard to see anybody coming close to topping that. Number 4. Deion Sanders, Baltimore Ravens Many of you kids probably know that Deion Sanders started his career with the Atlanta Falcons. It's hard to forget about his one-year stop with the San Francisco 49ers in 94, where Sanders was named Defensive Player of the Year while leading the team to its fifth Super Bowl. And of course, we remember the five years with the Dallas Cowboys, which included a Super Bowl championship. Sanders became the final piece that America's team needed to win that third Lombardi trophy, thus cementing their status as a dynasty. And, uh, some of you probably recall that one year that he spent with the Washington Redskins in 2000, but do you recall Sanders coming out of retirement to sign with the Baltimore Ravens in 2004? After being convinced by multiple players on the team, including Ray Lewis. Sanders' second stint in the NFL lasted two seasons and he was obviously well past his playing prime. Sanders retired for the 2005 season and his tenure in Baltimore was to be forgotten about in a short time. Number 3. Reggie White, Carolina Panthers Arguably the all-around greatest and most dominant defensive player in NFL history, Reggie White had remarkable stints with both the Philadelphia Eagles and Green Bay Packers. White was named to multiple Pro Bowls and won the Defensive Player of the Year award with both organizations. White played an integral part on the Packers Super Bowl 31 championship team, and he nearly led them to a successful title defense the following year. When all was said and done, White was a 13-time Pro Bowler and finished with 198 career sacks. After another dominant season with the Packers in 1998, where he won his second Depoy Award, White retired and sat out the 1999 season. However, he came back to play the 2000 season with the Carolina Panthers. He finished with 5.5 sacks and 16 combined tackles before retiring for good. Number 2. Johnny Unitas, San Diego Chargers Unitas joined the Pittsburgh Steelers in 55, but he was released shortly after and wound up signing with the Baltimore Colts for the 1956 season. Nobody at the time could have expected that one transaction to completely change the NFL landscape forever, but it did. Unitas emerged as the best quarterback of his era, and he led the Colts to one of the greatest stretch runs in the American history of sports. A three-time MVP and ten-time Pro Bowler led the Colts to three NFL League titles, and he was part of their Super Bowl V championship team. But all good things must come to an end, and Unitas eventually began to decline on a porous Colts team that began seeing major changes in the early 70s. Unitas was demoted to backup and saw limited playing time in the 72 campaign, his last with the Colts. Colts traded him to the San Diego Chargers before the 1973 season. He played in five games and attempted just 76 passes, completing 44.7% of them for three touchdowns and seven interceptions. Unitas would eventually retire, his time in San Diego to be forgotten forever. One thing that wasn't forgotten, his time with the Colts, of course. In a way, it's disappointing that he didn't finish his career on a high note with the Colts. He certainly deserved that. And number one, Jerry Rice, Seattle Seahawks. Obviously, most of us best think of Jerry Rice as the San Francisco 49ers legend, the man who led the team to three Super Bowl championships during his decade and a half with the organization. And of course, many of us remember the GOAT playing three and a half seasons with the Oakland Raiders, where he formed a lethal connection with Rich Gannon. Rice and the Raiders reached Super Bowl 37, losing to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, but hey, Rice left quite the memorable impression in Oakland. But it's super easy to forget that Rice suited up for the Seattle Seahawks in his final NFL season. That's right, Rice was dealt in Seattle for a seventh round pick, but his tenure at the Pacific Northwest would only last six games. In those contests, Rice had 25 receptions for 362 yards and three touchdowns. He actually signed with the Denver Broncos in the 2005 offseason, but decided to retire before suiting up for them. Does it bug 49ers fans knowing that their franchise icon played for the arch-rival in his final NFL season? Probably not. 
it's so easy to forget that he actually played in Seattle. What other NFL players had the weirdest final stops in their careers? Join us in the comment section down below, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys next time.